New York and on the new Hot 97 app. Ebro in the morning. On Hot 97. Ladies and gentlemen, you got on Ebro in the morning right here in New York City. Social distancing in the morning, if you will. With the beautiful Laura Styles, you got Rosenberg. Oh. And we have on the phone right now the mayor of Jersey City, Mayor Stephen Fulop. Give it up one yeah. time for Mayor Fulop. How you doing, sir? You there? Can you hear us? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, sorry, we didn't have you uh, turned on. How are you this morning? I see you're already in the office. Yeah, I'm in the office for the morning. Then we got a press conference around some homeless initiatives that we're doing. And then um, and then I'm going home to do some personal social distancing from the rest of the world. There you there go. You go. Um, so you were pretty aggressive for Jersey yeah. City uh, with regard to the coronavirus. You didn't wait on New York City to make their decisions. You didn't wait on the federal government to make decisions with regard to shutting down bars and stores uh, over in Jersey City. How far days-wise days wise, were you in front of the rest of uh, the governments? Yeah, I mean, we, we were really the first in the country, actually, to do anything around restaurants, bars, nightclubs, and uh, just because we knew that young people would still go out, you know, and we kind of felt that they wouldn't listen to anything that the government was saying. Now everybody's pretty much in line with the exception of daycares. We're a little bit more aggressive than the state around, you know, the daycare conversation. Um, we could talk about that because it makes no sense to me that you close schools but leave daycares open. Yeah, but, I, heard about, I heard about that, um, but I'm not quite sure what parents would still be taking their kids to a daycare. Well, look, uh, I mean, the, the argument, I think, from Cuomo and, uh, you know, Governor Murphy is that, uh, you know, first responders need access to daycare, which okay. is fine. But What's the difference between, let's say, a seven-year-old or a three-year-old? Like, you can't leave a seven-year-old home alone. So if you're closing the schools, you should close daycares. It's the same premise for everybody. And, and you know, kids could be carriers at the end of the day. So, you know, you, if you want to really preach uh, social distancing and closing things, you got to be consistent on that. And um, now, so has Jersey City closed daycares? Yeah, I mean, we, we have daycares closed. The only thing that I get still a lot of pushback around that is open is really the construction site conversation. A lot of people are upset that construction sites are still open, but that's kind of, a, um, you know, that's, that's a decision by both governors that have been very clear they want construction to continue. Um, and is that, about fi- is that about contracts? Is that about finances? What is that exactly about? I, I don't, I don't I, Ebro, I don't know, man. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> I mean, I I don't know the reason on that. I mean, look, it's important to the economy. I think if you're being consistent, you'd probably want to be consistent across the board. But, um, you know, they've been very clear that construction is not part of of, uh, required shutdown. So that's where we are. That's the only thing that we get pushback on right now. Um, So you were, and Laura, I know you wanted to talk about this. You were very aggressive on price gouging. Yeah, I was very proud of you. I saw you You were in the streets making sure people weren't abusing the community when they needed the most. Yeah, yeah. The first couple of days, we were, I was actually out there because people would tell us and then we'd go to the stores individually. I mean, one store, we, we, we gave them $90,000 in fines. I mean, it's $10,000 per offense. So, you know, we do it per product. So they had at that point nine, uh, you know, products that they were selling at, you know, two times, three times, four times the normal price. And you're wow. talking about Clorox wipes, Purell. Like basic things, and the line was like outside the store, down the street. So you know, people could be pretty terrible to each other in these sort of situations, and you just try to you try to you try to hope that people do the right thing, and, and if not, then you know, government intervenes. How do you um? How would you evaluate? And I've been asking a lot of uh, the political leadership this: How will you evaluate your city right now in its response, and not just your team, but the the citizens of Jersey City? How are they dealing with following policy? Yeah, I, they've been good. I mean, we've, again, more aggressive on, like, closing parks and uh, some of the common states. We just really want to push towards social distancing and people staying home best they can. People have been good about that um, up till now, but there's going to be a point where they start to get stir-crazy and look for outlets, which is going to be hard for us to manage. Um, and, you know, truthfully, I'm really concerned about the impact for the local economy. How are these restaurants and businesses going to get back up and running long term? Um, and with that, let's talk about this money that's supposed to come from the federal government that the Republicans and Democrats are uh, playing hardball with each other right now. This stimulus package, which the Republicans want a $500 billion slush fund to do with 
to do with what love they slush. want. <laughs> Don't you love slush? That, who does, the, the, play a miscellaneous a piggy who, bank to just, you know what I mean? Sprinkle some money out here, you know what I mean? Wherever we want it. Who doesn't want that? But um, how are you evaluating the time period of which this money will come to help small businesses and people who are day laborers or work hourly, way, you know, hourly jobs that need this money? Yeah, I mean, it's really urgent, specifically for us, um, outside of all the lost revenues that every other city in New Jersey has, uh, our school system relies on uh, a payroll tax for about $100 million of funding, which at this point is not going to be anywhere near what we expect it to be for obvious reasons. So, you know, we're going to need help from the state government, which is saying that they need help from the federal government. And where that all shakes out, we have no idea. But, you know, a guy like you, Ebro, you know, that's going to mean your tax bill if uh, if we don't get the help, unfortunately. That's right. So you're going to, you're going to hit the, hit us all. We're all going to hit those of us that have money uh, on the staff. And by the way, I'm okay with getting hit. You know what I mean? Um, especially right. if I especially yeah. if I know it's going to help the right people. It's, I have a problem getting hit and not knowing where it's going. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the schools for us relies on the payroll tax, and, and that's going to be a big problem. And, uh, you know, and then the other thing we're hearing from people are, you know, do I have to pay my rent? How are we going to handle that? And then beyond that, people are saying, do I have to pay my property taxes this quarter? And, and you know, we don't have answers for that at this point. So it, it's, it's going to be a really, really tough road the next couple months. What I've been telling people here is you'll have to pay, just not right now. <laughs> Cause that's the real answer. There is no, there is no version of you're not gonna pay. Not in, not in this economy, and not with the things you just articulated. If you pay rent, and your the place you pay rent to says you don't have to pay, or excuse me, we're not gonna evict you. That doesn't mean that you don't have to pay. That just means we're not gonna kick you out right now. But as soon as the government say you have to go back to work. We're going to have to figure out a payment plan. Yeah, but I, I mean, I, I think one thing that became very clear uh, is most people in this country, you know, literally live hand to mouth. That's, That's right. right. And so you put a payment plan where I'm saying here's an extra $50 or $100 a month. Most people aren't going to be able to handle that. So I, I don't know how to get those dollars back. I mean, like. That, uh, for me, I don't think most people can handle that. And, and this has become pretty clear that the whole economy was kind of built on this house of cards where people were spending money, but nobody was saving any money. And so how do you solve that? I don't know. Um, and so you think that no matter what happens over the next week to a month, the economy that we currently know knew will never be the same? Yeah, I, I think that's fair. I think it's fair to say. I mean, we're going to do our best to get people back up running and see where we can help on the local level. But, you know, it's hard to think that anybody's going to ever go back to being the same way they can. And you know what? If you think about businesses like nightclubs, for example, or bars, I mean, even if people start going back to work, those things are going to take another six months before they start making money again, just because people are so, uh, you know, people have PTSD from this stuff, for sure, you know? And so it's going to be a long road, for sure. Uh, his name is Stephen Fulop. He is the mayor of Jersey City. Uh, is there any message you want to send to people listening in Jersey City or otherwise as uh, political leadership that you would like to uh, emphasize in this moment? I would just say, look, it's been it's been a real tough couple of months for Jersey City in particular. I mean, we went through that mass shooting at the end of December, and uh, now we're right into the coronavirus situation. But it's a resilient city, and uh, we'll get through it. So uh, I'm just really thankful for people's patience. I actually got a question for for Rosenberg. I, I mm. you know, um, question about uh, what he thinks of kind of you know where Biden is in this whole conversation. I know you were like a big Elizabeth Warren and out there, and uh, I was just curious about your take. I haven't heard you really talking much about Biden, the Democratic nominee in this whole situ- Corona situation. Well, I'll tell you the truth. I did not see Joe Biden's quote unquote presentation that he was supposed to deliver yesterday. I saw it. How was he? How was he, Ebro? Um, it wasn't as clean as I would like from a potential president. But then again, look at the other president. We got a reality TV star as a president, and now the whole planet's sick. Yeah, Mayor Fulb, I guess I don't know. Um, I, I'm, I, I feel that if Joe Biden was president of the United States right now, we would be this, this situation would be handled entirely different. Is that because I think Joe Biden himself would have the plan in place? I don't know about that, but I fully believe the team he has around him would be fine and we'd be much better off than we are right now. So 
Um, I am adamantly supporting Biden right now. Um, and yes, Warren to me in this moment, it, this is exactly why she would have been the best potential candidate. But we don't have her as an option. So I'm, I'm here for Joe. And, and do you, I'm just curious what you think would be different if Joe Biden or you have Democrats there versus Republican that you see now. I mean, well, I, I think they would have been aggressively pursuing this from the second the world, the, the world community had heard about it. They would have been aggressively pursuing answers as opposed to being completely reactionary and in denial, which this administration has been. Yeah. OK, that's fair. I, I, I would agree with that. I think I think there, you know, for everyone out there and I, I've said it several times and I'm going to keep saying it. The World Health, no matter what China hid or denied, the World Health Organization knew about this in December. Our leadership in the United States of America did not even start having a serious convo about it with the public until March. So, knowing that, Any candidate that would probably be in this position other than Donald Trump would have not fired the individuals and gutted the organization that is committed to, uh, you know, subverting these pandemics. I mean, listen, all you need to know about how bad Donald Trump is in this place, uh, Mayor Fulop, is that when you see Mike Pence talking, Mike Pence, hardly a pillar of great politicians or moral code, you go, oh, well, this is much improved. I mean, there's a huge improvement when you see Mike Pence talking. So, I mean, there's just simply nobody worse than an uh, an egomaniac who only cares about money and being proven right. I mean, who could be more dangerous to have in power at this time? Yeah, it's fair. It's fair. Wait, what are you saying, Fulop? You like how Trump is handling it? No, I I, I don't. I'm concerned. I think that it it, it is concerning when Mike Pence is the voice of reason and comforting. um, (laughs) (laughs) Very, that's a problem. Um. And, and it is said that uh, that Dr. Fauci, who seemed like the most reasonable guy there, is no longer there. Yo, they got Fauci out of there. And Fauci was talking to a science magazine. He was like, yo, what do you guys want me to do? Push him away from the microphone? Right, exactly. Right, right. right. And you could see it all over his face during any of the press conferences. Dr. Fauci was like, oh, my God. I'm like, you are all of us right now. Yeah. So, so what, what do I think? I mean, look. We went through this stuff with SARS and MERS in the world, right? And nobody thought that this coronavirus would get to this. So I I don't know what kind of briefings they have in the White House and and if uh, they just viewed it as it would be similar to those sort of situations. Stop it, Fulop. Mayor Fulop, stop it. I'm not. Stop it. Because they knew. Because scientists knew. Stop it. Trump ran cover for other senators. They stood up in front of people in February in front of their main donors the head of the intelligence, Senate Intelligence Committee got up in front of his own donors in North Carolina and told them that it would be worse than the 1918 pandemic. He told that there's audio of it. Trump at that moment was still running cover, so these people sold their stocks in the stock market because they knew it was going to F with the stock market. They they knew where their money was. There's no question that was wrong, and maybe I'm just hopeful. Maybe I'm just hopeful and kind of in a place saying, like, Let's just hope for the best, and then you know I'm fine with that. We'll still back to throwing shade on these people, but I'm just like I'm sure tr- I'm looking at it from a Jersey City standpoint and saying we got a tough road ahead. So that's it. And we appreciate you for that, and we appreciate you coming on the program. Thank you very much for your time today. But thank you so and much. Thank you, and thank you for maintaining optimism during this crazy time. <laughs>